Many people ask me questions about Stoic philosophy and practice. I've created this series to provide short answers to the most common, recurring, or confusing questions about Stoicism. So this is an excellent question, one that keeps coming up time and time again. Does Stoicism believe in God? And there's a lot of clarification and even classification that we have to do in order to adequately answer this. For those who always demand simple and straightforward answers, in this case, we can say, yes, Stoicism does believe in God. And then we have to add a but. But it's not the God that you have in mind when you're asking the question, unless you happen to be thinking about the gods of ancient Greek and Roman religion, or what we're talking about when we say the God of the philosophers. Something we need to get out of the way right at the beginning is that the Stoics do not believe in a God along the same lines that many believers in the world religions that we encounter today believe in God. It's a different concept. So what are we talking about by these world religions? The Abrahamic faiths, we could talk about, you know, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, um, you know, various Indian religions as well, whether we're talking about Hinduism, particularly if we're talking about devotional Hinduism, um, you know, even, you know, theistic Buddhism, because there are theistic Buddhists, and we could go on and on. Um, typically, what goes along with that sort of belief is that there's a God who is in some way outside of the world. We talk about this as being transcendent <clears throat> to creation, or at least transcendent to the the mundane or, or you know, profane or worldly realm. And the Stoics don't actually believe in that. God is, you know, the opposite of transcendent, is imminent within the world. And so the Stoics advocated something like a sort of pantheism rather than a transcendent theism. So that's one important difference. Another really important difference is that when you look at the world religions, there are some sorts of revelations that are given, and those are taken as normative. Oftentimes, these are codified into religious texts. You're not going to find anything like that in Stoicism, particularly in modern, but even in ancient Stoicism. Um, you will find them referencing the oracles and some interesting discussions about divination, but the Stoics were always rather standoffish towards that. They, they didn't take that as providing an adequate basis for figuring out the nature of the universe or your life. So they're not theistic in the way that, that many of the contemporary world religions are theistic. You might ask then, well, why did you say the Stoics believe in God if they don't believe in God the way that many religious believers today understand that, that concept? Well, because they had a different concept. And this is what we typically call the God of the philosophers as opposed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the way Pascal formulated it. And the God of the philosophers is one that we can come to know primarily through reason. We don't need a religious revelation. And it's a God who's, you know, all good, all rational, you know, sort of a Think of a uh, you know idealized um, and, and very powerful version of human being. Although the Stoics don't think that God is all powerful in some sense. Epictetus says you know somebody might complain about God. Why did you give me this body that has all these you know screwy needs and messes with my my mind? And he says, this is the best stuff that God had to work with. You know, make things out of bodies. This is what you get. You know, um, so. The Stoics have a very different conception of, of God. It is one that's not only different from, say, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. It's also one that was different from the traditional Greek religion, you know, a polytheistic kind of mishmash, uh, which didn't have uh, exactly, uh, you know, uh, uh, any sort of determinative codification. There's all sorts of different things going on. The Stoics said all of that is, is really just superstitious nonsense. Uh, at best, it can be allegorized to understand the nature of God and the gods. And we can talk as well 
about God, capital G, who's often just called Zeus, and, you know, God, lowercase g, similar to certain conceptions of the angels and also similar to the Neoplatonic conceptions of these intermediary spirits, daimones, that, that take part in ruling and governing the universe. And so you'll see the Stoics talking about us living within a commonwealth of human beings and, and gods. Um, all of this is understood as being in, in kind of a harmony. So there's, there's, there's nothing like, you know, Ares seducing, uh, uh, you know, Hephaestus's spouse, Artemis, and then getting caught by them. The Stoics, like Plato, like many others, thought that's, that's just sort of nonsense for the ordinary people. So we have a very important distinction here. Not only is the Stoic concept of God different than that of traditional theism, it's also different of, from that of the polytheism of their time. Everything that I've said up until this point has been concerned with what we call ancient Stoicism as opposed to modern Stoicism, the Stoicism of today, which is in certain respects more heterogeneous. There's, there is a wider range of perspectives and there isn't even complete agreement about what modern Stoicism itself is. I'm linking below to a symposium that we had about that uh, last year that you can check out. So when it comes to modern Stoicism, there are some who say that all this God talk, just forget about it. Uh, and they're, they're atheists. They say that was fine for ancient culture. It, it was a useful way of conceptualizing the universe and the human being's place in it. But we've, we've moved beyond that. So there are atheist modern Stoics. There are also theistic modern Stoics. Interestingly, they come from a wide range of, of religious perspectives. Some of them are Jewish, some of them are Buddhists, some of them are Christians. You know, uh, some people want to see connections between Stoicism and Taoism. All of that is, is, you know, requires some syncretism, I think, in order to make work because there are some, some places where ancient Stoicism and, say, Judaism or Christianity were clearly at odds with each other and couldn't be in, in entire agreement. But that said, those are two ends of the spectrum. And then there are some people in between who are more agnostic and say, I don't really need to worry that much about all of this. Maybe we can allegorize the Stoics already allegorized God talk. And then there are a few people, uh, some who, who, you know, view themselves as not really modern Stoics and they have different names for, for how they fit in. Some of them I, were just the Stoics, some traditional Stoics, who say that you actually do have to accept the uh, Stoic conception of, of God as Zeus, as the Logos running through everything, Providence, uh, and, and so on down the line. So there's a very wide range of belief. But what you can say is that there are some people within the modern Stoic movement who do in fact believe in God and ancient Stoicism very clearly did believe in God, but it's the Stoic conception of God, not, you know, Christian, Muslim, uh, devotional Hindu, or, you know, traditional polytheistic conceptions of God. If you want to know more about this topic of Stoicism and God, I think the best place for you to go is to Cicero's dialogue on the nature of the gods, which features three characters, one representing the Epicurean school, one representing the Stoic school, and one representing the academic skeptic school, who are dialoguing with each other and setting out what their respective views are and, and criticizing those views. That is an excellent starting point. I would also read around in Seneca's letters, um, Epictetus's discourses, and Marcus Aurelius's meditations. Those are particularly helpful as well. And that will give you at least some conception of what it is that the Stoics mean when they use this term God. If you found this answer helpful for you, then please share it with others who might benefit from it. This work is entirely supported by crowdfunding on my Patreon site. So if you find it valuable, consider becoming a supporter at patreon.com Sadler.